Here's the thing we need to know. Number one, the truth will come out. The regime of the Manchurian candidate is going to change. You're going to also see an uprising of not only the populist uh, awakening with the people of God and also those who just love the Constitution and love liberty and love freedom. You're going to begin to see an unprecedented wave now that begins to come forward and begin to push back, so to speak, against darkness. But in this is going to be not only the great awakening, there's going to be great exposure. We've been talking about this for some time, and I believe this will begin to really come forward rapidly. Now, if you would please consider reposting this right away, helping some people get this, those of you who know where we're going, some things and what's happening. I think somebody will really benefit from what I'm about to get into here today. And I think it's going to be very powerful. I also have something I want to share from the Word of God that I think is going to greatly impact your life and bring encouragement to you. Now, one of the biggest things you and I have to face is uh, the fact that we need to stay encouraged in the middle of this present evil age. Because what happens is, is you look at all the things that are happening and what we have to recognize, this is not like a football game. This is not a sports event where you say, okay, um, it looks like we had a home team win and, and this happened here and, and now we're just gonna go on to the playoffs. It's not like a sports event. This is a life, a life of collisions, a life of victories. It's it's lifestyle uh, things that are, that are being confronted. And the only way we get through it. And this is encouraging for those of you who are in faith and really know the Lord Jesus Christ. The only way we get through it is to begin to build up our encouragement. You know, it talks about this in the book of Jude, that we should stir ourselves up in our most holy faith, praying in the spirit. And this builds you up on the inside. And now I, I just, here's the encouragement I want to give you right now, is many people believe that this whole thing's about to wrap up and it's over with. Now, we know the Lord could return at any moment. That's something that there's no, um, there's nothing stopping the Lord from just returning. There's many prophecies that have already been fulfilled, things that have happened in the Middle East with Israel, all this. There's so much that could begin to suddenly happen on the scene. And yet in my spirit man, in my inner man, I sense strongly we have a little time to do what we're supposed to do, meaning that there's the, the, the patience of the Lord is that all men be saved. He's wanting those that, are still lost. You're lost in wayward children. You're lost in wayward families. Maybe many of those who are watching this, maybe you are watching this and you're saying, I, I just, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I, I don't feel like I'm right with God. Well, I'm telling you, get right with God. He's not mad at you. He's not mad at you. Get right with God because this world is on a collision course with destiny, difficulty, nefarious events and all this. And yet I believe we have one more round in us and there's going to be great victory for those who stay in faith. It doesn't even matter if there's a political loss and we keep standing in faith. Listen, and here's the encouragement I keep going to, and I hope this really helps you today. Please, if you have ears to hear what I'm saying, I think this will help you. I really, I trust it will. In the early church times, they had guys like Domitian, Nero. They would burn Christians alive at the stake. They would feed them to lions and all these things would happen. And yet the church not only survived, it thrived through that time. The body of Christ is called to survive and thrive. And in the middle of this present evil age that we're walking in right now, I have to tell you, we are going to thrive. You are called to thrive. And God, I feel the prophetic unction of the Lord on me. I'm going to begin to speak to it right now. God is going to go after your children. He is after your children. That is why we're seeing this, um, what the devil is going to bring for evil and this exposure of Roe versus Wade and their decisions they're trying to make and they're trying to throw... Um, you know, they're trying to throw things that would jam up the gears and break up the mechanism of the victory for the unborn. And that's why they're exposing this and this leak happened with the Supreme Court. Yet I believe the end result of this is still going to be a victory for the righteous, a victory for the unborn. And listen, God's not only after the unborn, he's after the born. He's after the children. He's after your family. He is really calling those who are running from him to come home. Here's the word of the Lord that I have right now for you. It's a time for prodigals to be restored. Hear the word of the Lord. The prodigals are coming home. The prodigals are coming home. 
The prodigals are returning. The prodigals are returning. Those that have ran to the world, those that have played in the pig pen, those that have run out and spent everything they had on horrible things and ungodliness in the world. The Lord is saying very clearly, prepare for the prodigals. And as many prophets have declared, and I agree, is that this is gonna begin with the children and political leaders. And I have people that are running for office that I know personally and all this. If they would quit focusing on all the stupid stuff regarding uh, you know, spending and this and that and that, and they'd start to bring the fight to, to, to children. And they'd talk about for the sake of the children. And they begin to bring that to soccer moms and all this. We'd begin to see a turnaround. And if people ran on, hey, we're going to bring it to the children. We're going to rescue our children. And what they're trying to do and indoctrinate and change their identity and try to fix, you know, who they are on the inside and mess with the children. If we would begin to preach to soccer moms, then we'd realize the, the power of God is in women. It's in the women right now. And suddenly we begin to see a resurgence. And if pol politicians would run on children and begin to stand up for children, you'd see it wouldn't even matter what side of the fence people were voting on. They would stand with the politicians that defended people's kids. Man, that's, that's something people need to consider right now. Now, here's the thing. The prodigals are returning. You're going to begin to see this prodigal scenario where they begin to come forward. And we've seen this here. We have people we're very close with that the Lord showed us things even several years ago or a couple of years back, how things would happen when their children returned to them. And it began to happen as we saw. And this is a word. And sometimes God shows prophetic people things in advance and they experience it in advance. And then it unfolds for other people. You know, God does nothing unless he first reveals it to to his prophets. Now, here's something I want to say. The Lord is calling us to live, move, and have our being. He's calling you to go through uh, this time of victory in the middle of darkness. God, if there's anything God really delights in doing, you know what God delights in doing? He delights in overcoming in the middle of unprecedented odds and difficult scenarios. God loves to shine brightly in the middle of darkness. God loves to show how powerful and how wonderful he can make things for those who are under persecution and challenges and difficulty. And I gotta tell you, on a bad day, on a bad day, you are called to be the best there is. On a bad day, when the world is dark, when things are challenging, on a bad day, you're called to be the best there is. Jesus has called you to be the best there is. The anointing of God is on you to be the best there is. And the Lord's never gonna leave you and he's never gonna forsake you. Now, you're gonna see a whole lot of stuff that's gonna shake loose now. I think that the Manchurian candidate's gonna get shaken loose. I think they're gonna to have to find a few scenarios, like a perfect storm to ramp up. I think we're gonna to begin to see turmoil in the streets. I think we're gonna to begin to see turmoil uh, medically again. We're gonna to begin to see all these things that people begin to pressure the culture with. And if you think the uh, Mark of the Beast precursor practice serum that some people are like, ah, pfft, just go get it done. What are you worried about? And all that type of thought behind it. It's not people that have had it done that I'm upset about. It's what's behind the agenda to have it get in people's systems. The agenda is what I'm against, not people. Or if you've had to have it done, I'm not against you at all. I'm against the, the agenda behind it. And here's what we've got to recognize. That's not over. You think that's over? That's not over. They're too geared up for it. Why in the world don't we have free stuff for diabetics? Why don't we have free uh, care for cancer patients? Why don't we have free care for people and free medical stuff for anyone? You know, my wife had a kidney transplant. How come she can't get her medications she used to have to take all the time for free? You know, but we get a pandemic breakout, we get difficulty breakout, and when is it ever that the government comes out and says, we know, let's give all this stuff away for nothing. Let's just make it happen on a global scale to stop something that's about as bad as the common cold. You know, and I, and I realize there's more severities to it and I understand that. But listen, the point I'm making is, is why can't we have, you know, if it's so serious and they really care about the well-being of society, why don't real illnesses and real things that are actually destroying people, why aren't all those for free? And the truth of the matter is because it doesn't serve their greater purpose. It really doesn't. The
The greater purpose is control, mass genocide. It's the greater purpose is to stop the culture from absolutely producing young lions and warriors because the elites want to shut this thing down and they want to take back the planet, so to speak. It's like a religion. And if you don't understand this, you need to begin to understand it because the global elites, they want this earth and they want to make it a religion so to speak, where they take over society and depopulate the whole planet. And if you don't think that's real, you need to pay attention. Now, the other thing I want to say to you is on a bad day where the best there is. I do think there's going to come great change. What's happening with the Supreme Court is going to be fascinating to watch how this unfolds. The other thing that's going to be fascinating, the other thing that's in, just astonishing to me is how many people in the body of Christ right now the body of Christ that are, are not wanting to actually talk about political things or not wanting to talk about uh, going down the road of standing up for children or they don't want to begin to uh, talk about, uh, you know, who's a good politician and who's not. They just want to talk about revival, revival. The truth of the matter is if you try to separate the church from the government, as people say, separation of church and state, what that really means is the state should keep its hands out of the church. That's what it really means. It doesn't mean that the church has no right to communicate about governmental things or about um, you know, scenarios that have to do with the culture and society. Rather, it means very strongly that it's supposed to keep the government's hands out of the church's business and out of the body of Christ. And this is where we've got to recognize the spirit of the Lord is causing us to stand up and push back against this culture numbness. There are people that are intentionally deaf to what's going on. They pretend as if they don't care and they don't listen. And here's the deal. Every single person on the planet, every single young person, every single person that is alive right now, they have the fight inside that needs to be answered like anyone else. Why? Because they're created in the image and likeness of God in their spirit man. And their spirit man, when it's disconnected from the Lord God Almighty, they need Jesus Christ to reconnect them to the Father. And then they're going to begin to have that, that fight inside answered. And right now, you're going to begin to see people that begin to stumble. They're not going to know what to do. And this is our opportunity. This is your opportunity. This is the time where we begin to rise up and we begin to press forward in a wicked and perverse generation. And we begin to say, hey, <laughs> they may take our lives, <laughs> but they will never take our freedom. <laughs> no. Listen, I'm telling you, Jesus is going to begin to bring people forward that have never stood up before. You're going to see a resurgence of prodigals. The prodigals are going to stand up, and the prodigals who've run away, they're going to begin to have an anointing on them to stand up. You're going to see faceless, nameless people that no one's heard about before that begin to stand in the forefront and come out of darkness into the light, and they're going to bring many people with them. And this is going to be a very offensive revival. People are saying revival is the only answer. Yes, amen. Revival is the answer. But you've got to understand the move of God in this season involves government. It involves business. It involves all these areas of society that is going to take complete impact in to bring a real legitimate revival. Because revival as it used to be was people show up at church, they, they shout, and they have amazing times in the presence of God for a few weeks at a time, and that's a revival. And then, you know, another church has started. Something like that happens. Wonderful. But the Lord has a greater scope and vision for this revival. The scope and vision is going to involve reformers that are offensive to the institutions. And what do I mean by this? Guys like Elon Musk, and I know people are like, Joseph, you don't know. He's part of the system. Yeah, he is. He's part of all of it, you know, but he is also confronting some of these wicked leaders and some of these wicked voices. Why is he calling out the Epstein crowd? Why is he getting on this place and saying, why hasn't Twitter dealt with this better? Why is he calling out everything that has to do with uh, exploiting of children? He's calling it out. And I'll tell you what, for a guy who's supposedly in the, um, the bad guys camp, he sure is tipping their apple cart over. So now I'm not saying that he's virtuous and got all this stuff going on, but God is going to use 
uh, and I'll use Lance's words, trophies of grace. He's going to use outcasts, turn them into broadcast. He's going to offend the minds of the institution, reveal the heart of the institution, and bring these kind of people out that begin to stand up and do what they're going to do. God's going to work through many of these type of guys, and it's going to offend the religious like you can't believe. Okay, it's going to offend the religious. A united front is coming, and this united front this united front is going to begin to rise up against the darkness. And God is going to catch, hear the word of the Lord. God is going to catch the darkness off guard. Man, I got to say this again. God is going to catch the darkness off guard. That's a word from the Lord. Here's why. Because the darkness is arrogant. Now, one more word about Elon. I don't think he's all this and all that. He may do something terrible tomorrow. He may absolutely have an agenda that's all about him, okay? But the Lord is still working through him. And people that get all offended about this and say, I don't trust him, neither do I. I just like what he's doing right now. Maybe tomorrow that will change. And you'll see me say, well, <laughs> it was fun while it lasted. But here's what I wanna say to you. We need to put our thinker on and we need to walk in the spirit of God. And God is calling people to begin to bring strength in Jesus' name to this present evil age. And he's gonna use a lot of reformers and people that offend you and me. He's gonna use people that offend the mind to reveal the heart of the institution. And it's the only way to breathe life into the institution or the institution will line up with the spirit of the age and completely reject what God is doing. And many institutions have already done that. And here's the season we're in right now. God is giving grace. He's giving grace to institutional leaders to get their house in order to get their house in order. And if they do not, here's what's gonna happen. And I, I'm so compassionate towards everyone, so I don't say this with negativity or even judgment in my heart. That's God's place, okay? But here's what's gone on. You look at scenarios like Hillsong. Hillsong had a long time to sort out some stuff, okay? And now what's been done in silence is being brought and shouted from the rooftops. What's been done in darkness and hidden in darkness is coming to the light. There was a covering up, and I, I'm not fully aware of all the details of this. I haven't looked into it. I have friends that are part of that community that I very much love, and they're very good people, and they love Jesus, and they are servants of Jesus. So we need to be very careful who we're throwing stones at and all this. But here's what I want to say. When leadership in an organization has gone for years, and the Lord's tried to deal with them and tried to deal with things and tried to bring things out and tried to bring things out and they just keep sweeping it under the rug. There comes a point that the Lord says, my body matters more than you. My body matters more than the individual. And this is important. And that's why Jesus walked among circular. You know, he walked in a circular fashion throughout the, the candlesticks and lampstands in the book of Revelation. And there comes a point that the body matters more than the individual. And I don't mean that God doesn't save the individual and doesn't work with them on a personal level. I'm talking about their influence, not their life, their influence, not their salvation, their influence, their standing, their leadership. God will begin to remove things and adjust things. And people sometimes are blinded by their own own fanfare. They're blinded by their own, how can I say it? They're blinded by their own um, press. And this happens a lot, whether you're a small leader or a large leader. Sometimes you get an echo chamber around you and people are like, no, you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. You're amazing. No, you don't understand. I like some of the team members I have. They look at me and say, Joseph, just remember, you're just a man. <laughs> It's like, I get good things happening to me and my team, I've allowed them to be just so like family and all this, that no matter what happens, they're like, yeah, this is awesome. And then they look at me and they're like, especially Deepak, he'll look at me and be like, you know. I'm like, mm. <laughs> and so the Lord's gracious. But listen, here's what we got to recognize. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord is raising up a standard through you, through you. And now on a bad day, you're called to be the best there is. And this is what we recognize. Let me share something with you. This is going to really help. Let me show this to you. I'm going to open up my Bible today. This is really good. Let me go here. And this, this began to spring out of my heart. And I was praying this before I jumped on the broadcast today. And I want you to see this. I'm just going to go here very quick to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter. Isaiah chapter 61. I want you to see something here. 
This is very important you get this because this is gonna help you tremendously today. Isaiah chapter 61, it says this. This is for you. It's a word for you, for your children, for the prodigals, and the way God is gonna bring, bring such a great awakening to this nation. It's already begun, but it's gonna offend so many people, okay? It's gonna offend the institutions. Listen carefully if you would. Please, and please consider reposting this. And thank you to the partners and friends of this ministry. We are reaching, you know, last week alone, we reached over a million people last week. Now we've been reaching um, 2 million, 2.5 million a month, which those are real numbers. Those are not television numbers that people, you know, it's all subjective. This is hard data. We know exactly who we're reaching, you know, by demographic and numbers come in and all this, and it's just a blessing. And so we're reaching 2.5 million a month, but last week alone, we reached over a million people, which means if we keep that average up, we'll probably be reaching up to 4 million people a month. And that's because of partners, and we're growing rapidly, okay? And we're talking salvations, we're talking people reaching out, we're talking about the word of the Lord's going forward, people are getting corrected, people are not committing suicide, we're seeing people that are coming out of darkness into light. And the old model of the way media has been done is still alive, but it's changing rapidly. And we're on the forefront. We're around the curve. We're ahead of the curve on this model. God called us to it, and we're ahead of the curve because of partners like you. Now, let me say this to you. Isaiah chapter 61, look at this. If you don't mind, please pay attention. If you, if you have ears to hear today, I think this will really help you. And you're going to want to show this to somebody. Please, uh, we're breaking shadow banning again by the way you share this and repost this. I'm telling you, it's helping people. And thank you for being here. We're, we're defeating the shadow ban again. Isaiah 61, verse 1, this is you. Listen carefully. It says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. Come on right there. Come on right there. He's anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. That's so good. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. I love it. Praise God. I love when people comment about, are you doing this just for money? If I was doing things for money, I wouldn't be doing this. I'd find something else to do. Listen, we're on a set deal. Would you partner with this? It goes strictly to what uh, the ministry is doing and helping people and, and our staff and all that. And we're reaching a lot of people. But look at this. Isaiah 61, it says this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. Somebody needs to say, I'm anointed. Say it by faith. I'm anointed. And anointed is spelled A-N-O-I-N-T-E-D. <laughs> Not two N's in there, just for those of you who probably will post that. I'm anointed. He's anointed you, ladies and gentlemen. He's anointed you to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. This is a brokenhearted healing ministry. We're called to touch the wound. We're called to reach out to a dying culture and heal the wound, okay? That's what God's called us to do. And it goes on to say, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Those who are bound. Praise God. Well, those are good questions. Somebody just said, it was just a question. That's great. I love you, bro. It's a good question. And it's actually a worthy question. And then it goes on to say, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. We are gonna set people free. In Jesus' name, any ministry that's not committed to rescuing those who are staggering off to the slaughter, to answering the fight inside, and this involves you. It's not just ministries, it's you. It's you, you're anointed. This is God speaking to you. You are anointed to answer the fight inside. You're anointed. The world's dead, you're alive. You got Jesus in you. The world's dead, we're alive because we got Jesus. Doesn't mean we're better than anyone else. It just means we got answers for them. Look at this. It goes on to say, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening, the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I'm gonna land strong with this. This is gonna really help some of you. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I'm in Isaiah 61, verse two. And it says, and the day of vengeance of our God. There's that old song. There used to be a vineyard worship song that was called Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, right? And it would talk about the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon us. And it gets to the chorus and it says, uh, 
Uh, this is the year of the favor of the Lord. This is the day of the vengeance of our God. <laughs> anyway, but here's the thing. Isaiah 61, Jesus quoted this in Luke chapter four. In Luke chapter four, Jesus quotes the exact scripture. He stands up in the Sanhedrin. Now listen, this is really important to hear this. Jesus stands up in the Sanhedrin. He stands up in one of the, the temples, right? He gets up and begins to preach. He stands up that day, and Josephus actually says it this way. He says there was a chair reserved in all those synagogues, and there would be one chair in every synagogue that was never occupied by anybody that was attending. The chair would be left empty for the Messiah, Every synagogue had a chair that was empty sitting there for the Messiah. So here's Jesus. Jesus walks in, picks up the scroll, goes up to basically the pulpit. Good morning, friends, <laughs> right? Goes up to the pulpit, rolls open the scroll. Jesus does. And it says he found the place where it is written in Isaiah 61, what I just read you. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to declare freedom and liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind and healing, right? Jesus goes into this and then it gets to, to declare the favorable year of the Lord. And it says he stopped there, rolled up the scroll. Now, two things happened when Jesus stopped there. You gotta recognize this. Hear me, okay? Jesus, Jesus literally stopped in the middle of a sentence. What was the sentence again? Well, I'll read it to you. Isaiah 61, and now out of Luke 4, Jesus said this, around verse 18 is when it begins. But Jesus says here to proclaim in verse two, the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God. That was in Isaiah. Jesus goes to Luke and he's reading this and as he reads it, he says to declare the favorable year of the Lord and stopped and closed the book. He stopped mid-sentence. What did he stop at? He cut out the day of the vengeance of our God. What does that mean? He was saying, I'm here and the age of grace is here and the age of forgiveness is here. The day of vengeance of our God will come, but it's not today and it's not this season. So Jesus proclaims the day, or rather the year, of the favor of the Lord. And then, remember I just said, they left an open chair in the synagogue. Josephus, the, the most um, venerated uh, church historian, one of the most famous church historians around this time, said that there was a chair left in the synagogue. The only sin God doesn't forgive is the sin of rejecting Jesus. That's the answer to that question. So listen. Jesus then closes up the scroll. You know what he does next? He says to the whole congregation, because everybody knew Isaiah 61 is talking about, listen, <laughs> talking about the Messiah. You know what Jesus had the gall to say? <laughs> he said, today, this has been fulfilled in your hearing. Closes the scroll, steps down from the podium, and sits down in the chair reserved for the Messiah. Boom, right? And of course, then they just lose their minds, right? What? <laughs> religion, you wanna see a beehive go crazy? Just say something that offends religion. They'll be like, burn them at the stake, you know? Get your pitchforks and torches and line them up, ladies and gentlemen. And that is the spirit of a reformer. But then they take Jesus out. They're gonna throw him off a cliff and all that. And Jesus said, not today. And he walked through the midst of them. They couldn't touch him because his time had not come yet. And I'm telling you, this is a word for you and I. We got to keep preaching the favorable year of the Lord. We're in the day of the favor of the Lord. Actually, the year of the favor of the Lord. I'm telling you, the day of judgment, the, the, the retribution of God will come. It will come. But right now, you and I are anointed to preach the good news, not the bad news. We're anointed to preach the good news to the poor. What's good news to the poor person? You don't gotta be poor anymore. What's good news to a blind person? Hey, you can see. What's good news to those who are brokenhearted? We're healing your heart. 
Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. The gospel of peace is to heal the brokenhearted. The gospel of the kingdom is to be proclaimed and set people free from their captivity and their prisons. That includes casting out demons. That includes healing the sick. That includes recovery of sight to the blind. And this is how we stand in the middle of a present evil age. It says so clearly, I think in Titus or Timothy, where it says the same way you received him, so walk ye in him. How did you receive him? Well, it says in Ephesians and Romans and Galatians, it says we receive Jesus by grace through our faith. By grace you are saved through faith. Through our faith, meaning we receive what Jesus did for us, not what we do for him. We receive it, and then we add our faith to that and say, I believe, right? And then the same way you received him, so walk ye in him. That means every day you walk out your Christian life by grace through your faith. You say, God, you already paid it all. It's done. Uh, I'm trusting in you. And by faith, I believe that I'm standing in good rapport with you, God. By faith, I'm walking in this present evil age. By faith, I walk into darkness and push it back because Christ in me, the hope of glory, is there by grace. Man, that's good. That's better preaching than you guys are saying amen to. I gotta tell you that right now. That's the gospel. The gospel's not, you're terrible, you're bad, you're... That's not the gospel. That might have truth in it, but it's not the gospel. The gospel is he came to deliver those who are in prison. He came to set the hearts free. He came to bring recovery of sight to the blind. He came to set you at liberty. And then we begin to go rescue this generation of prodigals that's running from God because a lot of them, they don't believe in God because they've never truly met him. If you really met God and really met real believers, pretty hard to run from him when you really have an encounter, when you really have an encounter, that's the gospel. <laughs> that's the gospel. Thank you, Jesus. You know what the gospel is? Jesus died and was resurrected on the third day. He shed his blood for you. You repent and turn from your sins and give your life to Jesus, but then you're walking in the finished work of what he provided. He loves you. Jesus loves you and there's nothing you can do about it except reject him, period. Reject Jesus or receive Jesus. The quintessential question of this generation is, what will you do with Jesus? What are you gonna do with Jesus? Reminds me of that old song, praise the Lord, hallelujah. I don't care what the devil's gonna do. The word and faith is my sword and shield. Jesus is the Lord of the way I feel. Come on, that's so good. Listen to me, please. You're the answer this world's looking for because Christ in you, the hope of glory. Religion comes along and it bows you down and says, you need to shut up and be the worm that you are. You're so miserable. Don't you know how terrible you are? Don't you know how terrible you are? That's what religion says, not good enough, didn't pray enough today, didn't read your Bible enough, didn't, didn't, didn't. You know what religion's war cry is? Religion always has this attached to it, more, just a little more. Oh, you, oh really, you're a believer in Jesus? Well, you need to believe a little more. You need to read your Bible a little more. And I'm, I'm listen to me, I read my Bible like crazy. I pray like crazy all the time. But religion comes along and says, never enough, you better do a little more. If religion can't get you to reject Jesus, then it'll get you obsessed with outworking yourself until you just burn out. Religion bows you down like a slave. Bows you down like a slave. Jesus comes along and stands you up like a son and daughter. He says, I call you a son. I call you a daughter. No longer do I call you a servant or a slave. I call you a son, my friend, my sons and my daughters. He's the firstborn of my many brethren. He's Jesus. Anyway, praise God. So good. Jesus is Lord and he loves you. That's how we stand up in the middle of a present evil age. We realize what we got. We're not empty. We're loaded. And we're going to walk into darkness loaded with Jesus. And we're going to bring light into darkness. Never will he leave you and never will he forsake you. Man, God's good. <laughs> Um, I hope this helped you today. I really do. I, I believe God's going to begin to 
open some things up. If you're interested in more of that kind of understanding about Jesus, I have a whole series on that called Saved, Rescued for a Purpose. You should go to our website, get it right away. If you want to give your life to Jesus today, which I highly recommend you do, and you don't even know how to do it or go through the steps, just simply say, Jesus, save me. Rescue me, Lord. I'm going to give my life to you. And if you want to understand the fullness of what that means, please contact us. And if you're saying, I'm, I'm looking for salvation, I gave my life to Jesus, don't even fully understand it, we're going to give you a free teaching. It's about eight hours of teaching, okay, that talks about what you got or what you will have if you give your life to Jesus. It's called Save Rescued for a Purpose. Our, our partners make that available. We give it to you for nothing. You just contact our office. We'll, we'll send that to you. Praise God. JosephZ.com, okay? Also, we're looking for prayer partners, people that want to pray with us, partner with us in prayer. And uh, five minutes a day, and you pray Isaiah 45, verses one through three, over this ministry and over Heather and I and where we're going and our partners. And then Psalm 91, the whole thing, over Heather and I, our children, this ministry and where we're going, all our team. We just ask you for that. I'll tell you, that's been making a difference. And when you're praying, right now the big prayer request is that this Diamond Air 62 aircraft would be paid in full. Please pray for that. And just, just agree with us for that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And uh, the re people say, what do you need an airplane for? It's the same reason people need a car to get to work. Uh, we're just doing this airplane so we can go ahead and land in rural communities, preach the gospel at no charge, go in there, serve the people, minister to the people, begin to raise them up, and then go to the next place. And we do that, and we don't ask for anything for that. We just say, hey, if you want to stand with us, do it. Otherwise, we're just going to show up, no charge. The gospel should never have a charge. Praise God. So anyway, but if you are com compelled to be here, we love you, partners, those of you who stood with us. And if you want to stand with us, you can go to josephz.com uh, or you can text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. And we're just so grateful for you, partners and friends, from the bottom of our hearts. We really love you and appreciate you. We're reaching literally now millions and millions of people because of the partners that are here because of the partners that are here. Thank you. It's eternal, man. It's eternal. Well, we love you guys. We've got a lot of cool stuff going on. We're going to be sharing it with you. Download that app if you don't mind. Um, download the app, Joseph Z app, and we're going to have a lot of really direct, clear things on there. Sign up for our email list on josephz.com, and you're going to be really thrilled with some of the stuff we are bringing out this next several months. Praise God. We love you. If no one's told you today, you are loved, we love you, I love you, and Jesus is Lord. Please repost this and go to all of our platforms. Subscribe today to the platforms. Only like and follow us on Facebook. The subscription uh, hits you with like a, a money thing. We're not doing that. That's a Facebook algorithm. And then please go to all the platforms. Add Official Joseph Z on Instagram. We're on Truth Social now. Please sign up there. Uh, Truth Social, I think it's at Official Joseph Z on Truth Social. Love to have you join us there. And then, of course, we're on TikTok, we're on Getter, we're on Rumble, all these platforms. Go to YouTube, like and follow us on YouTube, and subscribe there, and we're just growing everywhere. We love you. Jesus is Lord. Thank you for reposting this. We have a lot more to bring you, and we'll be live again very soon. Love you guys. On a bad day, you are the best there is. See you soon. Bye, everyone.